Well, good morning, everybody. Woo, we've got some people on. Hello, Tyler. Hello, Shonda, Christy. Lucas is in the house, of course. He's watching over on YouTube because our old buddy Lucas, he's not really on Facebook, right? So <laughs> we always give him a really hard time for that. But we are live, you guys. In fact, I can turn the banner off that says we'll be live in just a few because we're here. We're ready for you, right? Are you guys ready for this presentation this morning? I am really excited about it because we have Lorraine Ball here with us today from Roundpeg. And Lorraine, if you have been around ECI social media for a while, then you probably have been to one of our presentations where we had Lorraine as our guest presenter. And she always brings it. So I hope you have your notebook ready. I've got mine ready. I'm ready to take notes. I always learn amazing things from Lorraine that I can literally go take action with right away. So we're really excited to have Lorraine here today. Obviously, we are here virtually again. So I want you guys to be as engaged as possible in the comments. Of course, normally we would be meeting in person with you, but you know, we're just kind of keeping things safe keeping it simple, and it's kind of fun, right? This is kind of a new, interesting way that we can still be here with you all, and we can still bring you a presentation, you can learn, you can network with each other, and that's what I want you to do. So I want you to be in the comments. I would love for you, there's a lot of you live. I've only seen a few of you introduce yourself, so I would love for you right now to go ahead and say who you are, what your business is, what it is you do, and put that stuff in the comments because normally about this time, we'd be kind of going around the room and introducing each other and ourselves. And we'd be saying, you know, what we do and why we're here. And we'd be answering a question, which we are going to do. We are going to have an opening question, but I, I definitely want to see you guys here. I see that we've got Brandon Copernol in the house. Hello, Brandon. Welcome back to ECI Social Media Group. Obviously, uh, we Brandon has been around for quite a while. We have Judy Porter in the house. She's here as well. Good morning, Judy. It's good to see you uh, this morning. Good to see your face or at least your puppy here, your dog, as I see. So obviously we can't see you in person, but this is the next best thing. So this is what we're doing. We are live. So I am Melanie Diane Howe. I'm one of our committee members, and I'm going to introduce our committee here in just a second. Um, but I am excited to be here with you guys today, able to kind of moderate this stuff, use technology. And we are live on Facebook. We are also live on YouTube. So if you're over there on YouTube watching us, give us a shout out. I want to see you in the comments. I am using an application called StreamYard. That is how I'm able to have these fun little banners that come across. I can pull your comments up on the screen, just like this one. We've got Julie here. She's here. She is the communications associate with Eden Church. Good morning, Julie. It's wonderful to have you here. And I can also pull up Shelly Gage's comment, who is also here, who is with the Muncie Public Library. Shelly is also has been around and been coming to ECI Social Media Group for a long time. We've been around for quite a while, years. In fact, I can never remember how many years um, that we've been around. I'm going to bring Peggy Sanova on in just a moment. She can maybe remind me how many times, how long we've been around. Um, I know that if Matt Howell is watching, he will be able to tell us how long we've been around because he kind of was, a, he was at the beginning of this whole thing. So, so you guys, we meet every third Thursday of the month, ECA social media group. So if you're new here, I would love for you to say new in the comments because normally we'd say, Hey, who's, who's here for the first time today? So I'd want to know, but we meet every third Thursday of the month. And like I said, normally we would be at meeting in person at the Innovation Connector. We'd have some coffee. We'd have some, you know, some uh, breakfast by our sponsor, but we're here live on Facebook and YouTube. So we're doing that today. But I want you to mark your calendar because as you can see, we're still here. Even though we're not meeting in person, we're still coming to you uh, the third Thursday of the month. So go ahead and mark your calendar. I always do that. I have a reoccurring thing in my calendar so that I never forget it and so that I don't book anything over the morning of the third Thursday of every month. So do that right now uh, before you forget if you haven't done that already. So uh, we always open up with an opening question, but before I get to that, I want to introduce, uh, let you know that we are a volunteer committee. So this is, uh, ECI Social Media Group is run by a volunteer committee. So I always like to, uh, we always like to give a shout out to our committee members. And so I want to make sure I introduce our committee members. So we have Peggy Sanova, who is from the uh, Small Business Development Center, the ECI, uh, East Central Indiana Small Business Development Center, where they help businesses start, growing, flourish. She's going to tell you about that in a second because they are our sponsor today. Uh, and we also have Jamie Faulkner with Northwest Bank, uh, previously known as a mutual bank. And then we have me, Melanie Diane Howe. I uh, am a self-employed marketing co uh, 
coach. Essentially, I have a podcast called DOI Marketing School. Check it out. We have Callie Selenke with the Community Foundation of Muncie. We have Lucas Tatro, non-Facebook Lucas Tatro, who is watching over on YouTube with Whitinger Strategic Services. And we have Kyle Renniger, who is one of the co-owners of Sea Salt and Cinnamon, a delicious vegan bakery that they are. And, well, not just bakery. They have good, delicious, savory foods as well. So, okay, we've got some people. I want to say hi. There's Callie. There she is, right? We have Stacy in the house. Hello, Stacy. She's a freelance journalist. Uh, with uh, She runs a blog, Family is in Grace. Wonderful to see you, Stacy. And we have Ashley. She's here, of course. She's here at her home office in Muncie. And then, um, so yeah, if you're here, say hello. Um, and then I want to start out with an opening question. And then I'm going to bring on our sponsor, Peggy. And then we're going to get to the good stuff, right? We're going to have Lorraine Ball come on and talk to us today and present. I will tell you that I would love to see you in the comments. So as we are going throughout this day, stay engaged. Um, if you're on your phone, great. Try to stay in here, but I want to see you in the comments. I want you to be engaged. It helps us know that you're here and that you can hear us and everything's working and you know everything everything's functional, right? But at the same time, it's kind of like a great way for you to just stay involved. Almost like if you hear something that you know kind of hits you, type it in the comments, right? If Lorraine tells you something that's amazing and you're like, whoa, knowledge bomb. I want you to type it in the comments, right? So I want to I want to see a lot of activity in the comments here. And then of course, also go ahead and share this live stream. I would love to see you share this live stream with your audience because Lorraine is going to bring bring you some amazing knowledge and there's a lot of people out there that need to hear this stuff and need to learn, but also this is a networking event too. So we want to get as many people in here as we can. So if you could do us a big favor and go ahead and share your stream, go ahead and share this live stream with your audience. That would be also fantastic. We would love you forever for that. So Okay, so let's get to the opening question really quickly. And I want to see you guys um, answer this question in the comments. I'm going to bring up a, whoops, let me get this ready over here. Da, da, da. Hold on. There we go. Uh, I'm going to share my screen really quick so that you guys can see our opening question. So opening question is today is, are you currently capturing email leads? Are you list building email marketing, right? So uh, Lorraine's going to talk to us a little bit about that today, but we want to know who here has an email list and are you actively, you know, list building, meaning capturing these, these leads. Um, I would love to know in the comments who is doing that. I know we've got Matt Howell here today and I know he's doing that, right? He's got an email list with Farmhouse Creative. So again, also let us know uh, where you're with. So we've got um, C.S. Hendershot uh, here. He's new assistant director of the resource development at United Way. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we've got Brian uh, Schleepler. He is with the Cardinal Greenway. Good morning, Brian. It's great to see you, of course. I'd love to see you guys go ahead and let us know uh, in the comments if you are list building. And while, while you guys are doing that, uh, okay, yes, yes, and yes, Holly says, so boom, she is, is she is capturing leads, list building, email marketing. Love it. Matt says, yes, he is. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So very good. Let me go ahead and get a couple things cleaned up here so that we can get moving. I'm going to bring uh, Peggy Snova on in a moment. She's backstage, if you will. Uh, I've got her backstage uh, ready to go. And uh, so again, I'm using an application called StreamYard. So I know that some of you may be curious about what's going on here. How am I pulling up all these fun things and how are we doing all this stuff? In fact, let me get our uh, logo up here because that belongs in the corner, right? Uh, so StreamYard is an application where we can share our screen and you can bring guests onto your live stream. So if you haven't checked out StreamYard yet, I certainly would highly recommend that you do that. It is amazing. I've been using it uh, for my uh, own business. I've been having fun with it. I've been using it on my personal page and I've been using it in a side of a boot camp where I'm teaching stuff about Facebook Live. So definitely check it out. It's pretty, pretty fun. And that is how I'm able to bring Peggy on here in just a moment. She's down in my green room right now. So I'm going to make her give me a thumbs up that she's ready to go. And she says she's ready to go. So I'm going to bring on Peggy Sonova now from the Indiana or the East Central Indiana Small Business Development Center. So Peggy, welcome to the stream. Good morning. Good morning. It's exciting oh, to be here. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Oh, there. no. Now you got me. Okay, there's a slight delay. Hold on one sec. We got tech issues, right? So we got tech issues. So what I'm going to have Peggy do is Peggy, I'm going to have you exit the stream and then come back. So close it out and then come back in and hopefully your audio issue will be fixed. So we'll try that. We'll give that a try. So, all right, guys, sometimes that happens. Technology, right? Technology sometimes can make things a little bit funky. Is is I would ask this question. 
do, do is 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 my word are my words matching my mouth or is that off right i would want to know that so okay let me see really quick we've got some people in the comments uh while peggy is getting back in let's see um okay so callie says I am trying to figure this list building thing. Working outside of the office has boosted our email communications, and now I'm wishing I focus on our list sooner. I bet a lot of people are feeling that way, actually. Um, so we've got capturing some but not actively using. Um, Gay Nation's here. Good morning, Gay. And let's see, Sarah Jenkins. Uh, she, oh, she's talking about StreamYard. Oh, Sarah, you should text me. Let's talk about StreamYard. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Okay, Lucas says she sounded great on YouTube. So, okay, we will hopefully get this fixed. Okay, let me see here. No tech issues, good deal. Okay, it could just be my headphones. Who knows, guys? We'll see what happens. So, Peggy, let's give this a try again. I'm going to bring you back on to the stream. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it, could be, it could be on me. So, everybody everybody says you sound great. So oh, I'm going that's to, what I want to um, hear. Yeah, and it's good. Now it's good. Okay. okay, we're good. I don't know what's going on. Technology, sometimes it's our friend and sometimes it's the enemy, I guess, right? So, well, good morning, Peggy. Good Wanna, morning. Thank you so much for being our sponsor again uh, this morning, of course, for ECI, uh, or for ECI Social Media Group. Why don't you tell us a little bit about ECI, so or excuse me, ISBDC. You go, go, just go. It's well, you. Melanie, I always have that problem. East Central Indiana, what? So we are the East Central Indiana Small Business Development Center, and we do help businesses start, grow, and flourish. Woo! I miss being in that room with all of you, as I've done for several years. I think it started in 2011, maybe 2012. So, Melanie, I'm not with it either. Um, we help businesses in all areas. And the best part about what we do is there's no cost to our service because we are paid for through your tax dollars. So you've already paid for us. You need to come on board. But what we really are asking of you today, we're going to make an ask, is that we would love for you to help with us figuring out what our next webinars and workshops need to be. Because obviously business has changed over the last two months and there are probably are different needs than we're aware of. So if you could help us by going to a website, which I think Melanie's going to put up for me uh, and answer a survey monkey. And uh, we'll probably have that up in uh, at ECI SBDC as well. So if you could let us know what you're wanting to know now with the change in the business environment. But um, we can help with all kinds of things as well. We are really great at strategic planning. I know many of you are worried about your financials right now. We can help you get those in order. We also give great advice on marketing. And again, our services are at no cost. So that's all I want to say, because I know you all really want to hear from Lorraine. <laughs> well, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I removed her. I removed her. Let me bring Peggy back on. Hi, Peggy. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate that. We will definitely be bringing Lorraine on here in just a second. So Peggy, I, I have to say, you know, I have been a client of yours for years and I always like to make sure everybody knows this. And I think you said it, your services are free, but what is the best way if somebody is interested in getting, you know, help from you guys, what's the best way for somebody to start that conversation? How, how would somebody say, I need Peggy, I need Peggy in my life. I know I tell people they need Peggy in their life, but tell, tell me, um, tell our, our audience how they can actually start that process. Well, we have a great website, isbdc.org. You go there, find our location, and there's a way to ask for services. Our phone numbers are up there. Our cell numbers are up there. So we are ready to serve you, obviously, virtually right now, hopefully in person one of these days soon. But again, just go there, call us. Um, you can fill out an assessment and let us know that you want to serve us through uh, email or you can show up at the Innovation Connector, but right now we're not there. Awesome. Okay. And they would just click this button right here, right? If they wanted to come. That button right there. Yeah, thank you. perfect. Wonderful. Okay. okay, you guys. So there you have it. So thank you, Peggy, again so much. We appreciate everything that you guys do, not only for the community, for small businesses, but of course for ECI Social Media Group as well. So thanks again for being our sponsor today. And I will take you out of the stream now and you know the drill. You'll go backstage and you can go hang out back there or you can do whatever you want. So thanks again, Peggy. It's good seeing your face. All right. Well, there you have it. So there is the link right here. 
And I, I see a couple comments. Uh, uh, we've, one of our committee members has put the link in the comments as well so you can click it. So you can actually click through that link. Now, yes, go take that survey, but not right now. I want you to pay attention. I want you to be here right now, right? So go ahead and bookmark that if you don't mind. Maybe open it up and minimize that browser so that you can remember to go take that survey after we are done with this presentation today. So I am going to do a little cleanup here really quick. I'm going to bring on Lorraine in just a second, but I want to do a quick glance at our comments, make sure everybody's doing good. Um, so yeah, a couple comments. There's a couple comments about the technology. So uh, Megan says, if it's anything like YouTube live streaming, there's just a 20 second delay, yada, yada, yada. Yes, there is a delay. So for example, when you live stream, you guys actually, as you're typing, I don't see your comments for about, usually it's anywhere from about eight to 30 seconds. Uh, it just depends. But that little technology thing was actually just more of the um, the audio catching up in my headphones. At the very beginning, it was just a little off, but then it was totally fine. I'm just really excited that you guys actually could hear Peggy just fine and everything was good. Uh, Peggy, just so you know, Brandon says he needs a chat soon, so he's coming your way. Um, very good. Okay, so we've got um, the survey up. Everybody says, good, good, good. Let me just make sure we're all good to go. We are, okay, fantastic. All right, everybody, so I am going to now bring on Lorraine Ball from Round Peg. Lorraine is in the backstage. She's in my green room. Give me a thumbs up, Lorraine, if you are ready to come on. She's ready to come on. Two thumbs up, she gives me. So welcome, Lorraine. Hey, everybody. How are you? You know, just fabulous. It's Wonderful. another day in paradise. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Well, we are so excited that you're here. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, hey, can you present uh, on video and do it during a live thing? And not everybody's cool with that, but we are so appreciative that you are. And of course, you know, you know, all this social media stuff, you get all the whole world of marketing. So we knew we could count on you, <laughs> our friend Lorraine, of course. And I know you always do such a great job. And so personally, like I said, I am super excited to have you here uh, with us today. So if you could do, uh, I, I didn't do an introduction. So why don't you introduce yourself? And then I'm just going to kind of give it, hand it over to you and let you take it from here. And uh, I think if you want to share your screen, uh, obviously you, you'll be able to do that. And you mm -hmm. can do, you've got some slides, I think, as well. So why yeah. don't you do a quick introduction and we'll get this thing going. Okay, so um, for those of you that haven't met me, um, I run a digital agency down in Indianapolis uh, called Roundpeg. We are, uh, we're about 18 years old, so we've been doing this for a while. Actually, we've been doing this bef before we were a digital agency, when we were just a traditional agency. Um, we've recently launched an online training company, and so... Uh, I didn't have a crystal ball. I didn't know this was going to happen, but I got to tell you, I am really happy that we've created it. Um, the digital training business is called the Digital Toolbox, and there'll be a link later. It's Digital Toolbox IN, and um, there's webinars and seminars and resources and lots of things that you can do at home while you're... Um, while you're at home. And also I've got a podcast more than a few words. And so like after this presentation and you go to the digital toolbox and you still haven't had enough of me, be sure to look for more than a few words wherever you listen to podcasts. That's it. I could go on, but you know what? That's enough about me. I love it. I love it. And yeah, you guys will be sure to put some links up uh, towards the end of the presentation for sure. So that you guys can check all this awesome stuff out that Lorraine has, of course, because you're not going to want to this to stop here. We Lorraine is amazing. She always does great things. <laughs> Stacy says, Lorraine, woo! And then, of course, Brandon here says, we're in for a treat. Of course we are. <laughs> you guys are not going to want to be done with Lorraine after this is up. So you're going to want to check out that podcast and you want to go check out that digital toolbox uh, for sure, too. So. So Lorraine, do you have, um, are you good to go? Are you ready? You I'm good. good? Uh, uh, I have slides. I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is I'll pop them up and then I'll take them down when I want to talk uh, so you can see me because I'm used to standing in front of a screen. And so it feels kind of impersonal to have the slides up the whole time. Yeah, you'll be, you'll, we'll still be able to see your face. So it'll, oh, it'll actually be okay. So yeah, we can do it this however you want. All right. So I'm going to share, share my screen and... Mm -hmm. Uh, screen sharing is easiest with two monitors, and I I figured that out. Awesome. So give me just a minute, and we're going to share this one. And then what I'm going to do is, because I follow instructions well, uh, and you told me to get two monitors. I got two monitors, <laughs> and look at that. Look, I love it. It's ready. Okay. Yay. Okay. All right. 
So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about this idea of the fact that people come to your website and they don't know you and they stumble across your website and your goal, your goal is to make sure that they don't leave, that they stay and get to know you and give you an opportunity to get to know them. You know, if you had a storefront, and maybe some of you do, somebody walks in, you greet them, you say hello, you try to strike up a conversation. Well, that's the same thing that you wanna do with your website as you convert random strangers into raving fans. And you've probably seen this sales funnel or a funnel that looks like it, and you go from someone being a visitor, stranger to a visitor, Somewhere in here, you actually sell them something. And then there's those few customers that become the raving fans that continue to be your cheerleaders and talk to you and talk about you to other people. And inbound marketing is really designed to do all of these things. Because here's the reality, people. 57% of purchase decisions are made before a customer ever talks to a supplier. And this number is going up. And let's face it, this probably, this whole quarantine has probably even accelerated this so that this number is going to be higher and higher. So how are people making up their minds? If, if they're not talking to your salespeople, if they're not talking to you, how are they deciding? They're deciding based on the information they find on your website and other sources that talk about you. Today, we're going to focus exclusively on what's going on on your website. People who come to your website, they come for answers to questions and solutions to problems. And if your website doesn't do this, those people are going to leave empty handed. Um, I'm going to stop here for just a second. And I'm going to tell you that I don't come up for air. If you've not heard one of my presentations, you're not prepared for the fact that I just keep talking. So if you have a question, it's way more interesting. Go ahead and pop it up. And Melanie, don't feel like you're interrupting me. If somebody has a question in the timeline, go ahead and, and put it up there so I can go off on a tangent and we'll have some fun. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. Fabulous. Okay, at every step along the way, you have an assignment. If you want to convert strangers to visitors, you have to be doing things that attract attention off your website and bring them in. Once they become a visitor, your attention has to turn to things that are more engagement related. When you're here between prospect and customer, there are closing activities, and this is where delight comes in. And we'll touch on each of these. If you're putting together an inbound program, this is what you, there are five things you have to think about. You have to think about who are you talking to? Inbound marketing absolutely will not work if everybody is your customer. I get it. You want to sell to everybody, but if you try to talk to everybody, you don't talk to anybody. And so as you're building inbound campaigns, you got to clearly define the audience. And if you have two or three different customer segments, that's fine. You get to repeat this process for each one because the more narrowly focused you can go, the more specific, the better chance you have of actually of actually answering that real question or solving that real problem. You want to create an offer, something that you are going to say, hey, if you give me your email address, I will give you this. And in case you're curious, sign up for your newsletter ain't enough. I know 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we all discovered the magic of email and that ding, you've got mail made you smile. Now you've got mail. We all have too much email. And so what we're looking to do is find ways to declutter and only focus on things that add real value to each of us. So offering me a chance to be on your newsletter isn't going to do it. But creating an offer that catches my interest, something that I'm like, oh, I got to have that. I'll give you my email. You got to present it on a landing page on your website. You're going to have to drive traffic to that page. And then you're going to have to have some automated responses. So clearly defined audience. You need to 
build a description of who your target customer is. And this is a really good example of a persona because what they've done here is they've actually given you a photograph of a real person. This is a quote that actually comes from one of their real customers. And then there's some general information, age, gender, where does she live? What does she do? What's important to her? What's she frustrated about? If I get something like this, now I'm like, okay, well, if this is the customer, this is what her problem is. This is what I'm going to offer her. This is how I'm going to talk to her. These are the words I'm going to use. These are the pictures that will appeal to her. These are the places I'm going to promote this. And if you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, well, yeah, that's great if you have a consumer product, but I sell to businesses. You're still selling to people. You're still selling to business owners. You're selling to purchasing agents or accountants or other other professionals, you can still do this same type of brand of B2B persona and think about who the person is, what's his job or her job, what, what's important to him, what are the problems that that person has and what can you do to help? Because the only reason anybody opens up their wallet and gives you their money is because they have a problem and they think you can solve it. And so you need to create an offer that catches their attention. Now, when I say an offer, this is not something that people buy. This is what are you offering to get them to give you your email? Because unless you're selling chewing gum at the checkout counter um, at a grocery store, your sales process, people are going to kind of dance with you. They're going to learn a little. They're going to step away. They're going to learn a little. They're going to ask some questions. They'll come back. And you need to create an opportunity for them to start that conversation. And that's what an offer is. And it can be a white paper. It can be a checklist. It can be a workbook. But it's got to be short. It should be simple to create. And it should be simple to consume. Don't give me a 20-week program because I look at that and I think, I ain't got time to wait 20 weeks to get the answer. Give me a two-week program or a one-week program or a, a workbook. And if I download it, then offer me additional information. The other thing, and this is really key, even though you may call it the ultimate guide to inbound marketing, you want to leave prospects wanting more. You want to demonstrate that you know something with that offer when somebody gets it. They should feel like it was worth the trade for their email. But there should still be a few unanswered questions. Because if you don't leave them with some unanswered questions, why would they come back? Some offers can inform. This is a great example of a landing page that we did for a flooring company. This is a product that people don't buy very often. You know, you don't change out your floors regularly. And so as you start the process, there's a lot of engagement. And we put together a eh, eight-page book lit on things you should know about hardwood flooring. And here's the promise. You give us your name, we'll, an email, we'll give you the guide. And then we'll send you additional information on hardwood flooring. You'll notice that this page is pretty simple. And this and um, there's no navigation on this page. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in the landing page design. But I just kind of wanted to point that out. You might want to answer questions. I love this. What is What the F is inbound marketing? Here, they're showing you kind of a, a, a picture. You don't really get an actual book. It's a white paper. But it kind of communicates this idea that it's a hefty resource. 23 page guide. And again, all you got to do is give me your name and your email address. You can provide resources. Um, this is, say, there are other digital marketing toolboxes besides ours. But here you go. You give us your email, you get it. And then what's in the toolbox? And so you're looking at all these things and you're going, yeah, that's great, Lorraine, but how do I create this? Where does this stuff come from? 
Offers should be things that you know that your customers don't. Effective offers are ultra specific. They don't cover a wide range of topics. It should cover one question, one problem. And then if somebody wants information on the next step or the next step, they come back. It's got to be immediate gratification. So a lot of people do this thing where there's an email capture and then you hit submit and then the thing pops up and says, go check your, go check your email. So you have to go log into your email and sometimes it doesn't come right away. That is really annoying. Why do people do that? Well, because I don't want spammers to just fill it out. Who cares? It doesn't cost you anything to deliver that resource immediately as soon as somebody fills out the form. They are in the moment. They are ready to read. If you send it to their email, I don't have time to go to my email right now. I'm going to work on something else. You've lost them. And when they finally get to your email, they may not remember why it was they even wanted it. Rapid consumption. Don't give me a 30-page download. I'm not going to read it. Two-page checklist. Uh, we do some recipe cookbooks. I'll show you that in a minute that are a little bit longer, but you can kind of flip through really fast and get exactly what you want. It's got to have a high perceived value. It doesn't have to be a really expensive thing to create. But the person who's downloading it really needs to feel like they got something in exchange for what they were offering. And it's got to be designed to shift the relationship from a casual drive-by to somebody who's like, oh, you actually know something. I kind of want to talk to you. So what do you know? What do you know that your customers don't? What can you share? You'd be amazed at how many different things you can share once you start thinking about it. First off, industry data. If you, and this is really good, if you're selling in the B2B space, your customers always want to know how they measure up to other people just like them. Well, as a salesperson in the B2B space, you're prepared to answer that question. So industry data, what's happening? What are the trends? Survey results. People love to know how they compare. So do a survey and then say, hey, fill out this form here and we'll send you a copy of the results. How-to guides. Um, if you're in, and I would say our recipe collections for our Randall Beans client fall into this category of um, how to use the product. So we're selling beans. You don't know, you know, you don't know, uh, how to cook beans so you don't have enough recipes to make it interesting to buy a case of beans. Well, guess what? Here's 20 recipes. You're good to go. Case studies, examples of how other companies are applying your tools and techniques, white papers, workbooks, resource links, a, a compilation of everywhere people can go to get information. And instead of having to search all over the internet, they download your guide and they've got it all checklists, scorecards. Um, if, you're, if using your product or service requires some preparation, a checklist is a great download offer. Scorecards. Again, um, people want to know, how good am I? So self-audit, self, uh, audit your marketing, audit your website, audit your lead generation process. Any of those things work well. Audit, you know, uh, score your interior home design. You know, uh, are you shabby chic or just plain shabby? And the cool thing is these offers don't have to be really complicated. This I thought was a great example. It's a simple Excel spreadsheet, or maybe they've moved it into Word. It's just got a bunch of lines, a little bit of instruction, and their logo. So you download this and you use it over and over again. My accountant just sent me one and I have shared it, I think, with a half a dozen people. It is a simple spreadsheet that he created to calculate if you got PPP funding. And it's just a simple worksheet and it's got kind of the categories of where you break things down. You put a number in, you put in how much your loan was, and it automatically calculates it. 
It probably took him 20 minutes to do all the formulas and save it. And it's got his logo on it. And he just shares and shares it. That's the kind of thing that people will download. And it's a tool that you're already using with your client. Collections are also awesome. Um, you can do a white paper that is just a collection of your blog posts. And you're thinking, well, people can just go to my blog and they can read it. Why, why would they download that? Because this is easy. When you go to the Randall Beans website, there are now hundreds and hundreds of recipes. And all you want to do is find the chili ones. Well, we compiled a bunch of the chili recipes into a Word document. We copied and pasted, copied and pasted, put a pretty cover on it and saved it as a PDF. Now I'm going to pause here for just a minute because I want to give you a number that hopefully will give you a sense of what's possible. Randall Beans was one of the first companies that we did this download strategy with really aggressively. When we started working with them, they had 275 names on their email list, 275. At last count, the last time I checked, we were over 9,000. And how did we grow that list? You're looking at it. Now, we've been doing that for a number of years. It didn't happen overnight, but we also delete people over time who don't follow and, and, and don't, don't open the emails anymore. And so we've probably added 14 or 15,000 people to our email list simply by creating these downloads, offering them on Facebook, and giving people a chance to give us their email address in exchange for the recipe. Okay, so how do you do this? Well, part of it is the perfect landing page is an absolute requirement. You have to bring somewhere people somewhere where they're like, ooh, this is really nice and I want that. And the perfect landing page is designed to lead people to yes. Now, there's not one, one perfect page, but here are some basics on how you design that page. You got to start with a good headline. You got to have an image, a picture that pulls them in. A little bit of quality text. And when I say a little bit, do not bury people in a lot of reading to get to your thing. They just, they come, they're already sort of predis predisposed to download it. So just remind them why they came. Large call to action, a sign up form, maybe a testimonial if you think you need to sell it. Here are a couple of examples. This, I think, is a fabulous page. Company is Kleinboost. Here's your promise. This is why you came. 32 new hacks to get more phone leads. Here's our offer. It's a book. One more promise and get my guide. Boom. That's it. Short, sweet. There's nothing else on this page. When you create a landing page for your offer, Think about what do you really need? And I'm going to compare these two landing pages. Here, it's an exclusive offer for subscribers. You get 180 blog post ideas. And there it is. Name, email, yes, please, no thanks. But all you're really asking for is name and email. On this form, get your Facebook ads evaluated for free. You'll notice it's a longer form. There's a little bit more information. They want your phone number. They want your web page. Every line that you add on your conversion form will reduce the number of people who fill it out. And so if you're just giving away something like this, a white paper, a, a, a resource that doesn't cost you anything to deliver, don't ask for anything more than the name and email address. If they're engaged, you'll have opportunities to get more information from them over time. Conversely, here they're giving away something of value. It's going to take some time. And so they want a little bit more information. You'll notice if, if uh, any of you use HubSpot, you'll notice the forms really have a, a lot more fields because that's really designed 
for the more serious prospect. So this would be step one. This is later. So for example, you want to download something from my website. This is what I'm going to give you. You want to attend one of my webinars. I'm giving you something with a higher value. I want a little bit more information in return. And I love this. It's not every software can do it as easily, but the yes, please, and no thanks. Making people say, no, I don't want what you're offering to exit the page is an interesting technique. And it works. Because it really makes someone stop and go, well, you know, I did come here. So, yeah, well, I'll take it. Landing pages. Single focus. Do not try to sell three products on a landing page. Do not offer me your white paper, a little bit of information, and then, oh, yeah, and by the way, I got this too. No. Landing pages are single audience, single focus, uncluttered, limited navigation. You'll notice a lot of the ones I showed you really didn't have any navigation. I... It's a thing. I, I don't really like people to feel completely trapped. So I usually put either a logo at the top so they can click on it and get back to the website. And sometimes I'll just put the entire, just main navigation. Um, and something else, and we're experimenting with this, and it's got some real promise, is the pop-up on exit. So you came to the landing page, and for whatever reason, you decided you didn't want it. You go to X out, and before you do, it pops up one more time, and it's like, really? Are you sure you don't want it? Now, some people will think that's pushy. Some people will fill it out. I would test it and see how it feels to you. Okay, if you build it, if you go to all of this trouble, you build these great resources, you figured out who you're talking to, and you've got this landing page, now you just sit back and wait for people to show up, no, that's not how it works. You got to get your message out to a wider audience. And you need to make this look as interesting and appealing as possible. So you need to think about, go back to who your customer is. Are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they on Pinterest? Are they on LinkedIn? Where are they most likely to hear about you? That's where you need to be. So you need to actively promote your offer. And you need to think about where your prospect is. Where are they hanging out? And it isn't necessarily everywhere. And, and this is one of the things that I really, really love about digital marketing and has always fascinated me is the ability to focus in on a specific audience. For Randall Beans. We are on Facebook. That is absolutely where the Randall Beans customer is. We have tried for years to cultivate a younger audience. We've tried with posts on Instagram. And quite honestly, it really doesn't work for us. And so we've kind of gotten, you know what? We're okay. We're going to cultivate a community on Facebook because that's where our community is. And then, you, again, you want to make your offer look as interesting and appealing as possible. And it's not hard. These are not terribly complicated graphics. Now, I will admit I do have an amazingly talented graphic designer who I give her an idea and she just creates these beautiful graphics. But really, let's break it down and look at what she's doing. It's a lovely piece of stock photography, get a subscription to a stock photography resource, or even better, go out and take your own pictures of your product, your service, your people. And it's a little bit of text, logo, download now, register now. Now, she's probably using Illustrator to create these, but you don't have to. You can actually create them using any number of products. And one of my favorites, and this will create graphics that are perfectly sized for Facebook. And um, they work for Instagram, not Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, LinkedIn. You can actually go to PowerPoint. Most of you know how to use PowerPoint. 
put the image down in the background, drop a little text on top, put a square box in, and save that individual slide as a JPEG. That's all there is to it. You will have a perfectly sized image. It will work, again, on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. One thing that you have to be careful about is when you're designing these, you've got to worry about what's called the crop zone. Because as you move from platform to platform, it will trim them just a little bit. So for example, this footer actually will disappear. This is, I think, specifically sized for Facebook. If I want to go on uh, LinkedIn, I probably have to raise that up a little bit. So try to avoid getting too close to the edges. Again, she's making custom sizes for me. If you're using PowerPoint, keep your text in the center. Pinterest, you, you definitely want to have graphics for different sizes and shapes. You can um, create two side by side and then drop it into paint and slice and dice them. Again, little bit of information. You notice there's not a lot because when you drop these into the timeline, you're going to have text above or to the side. So keep it simple. And then use your website to drive traffic to your offer. Every page on your website should have a logical next step. Think about it like those late night television commercials. You know, buy the buy our new blender and, and we will throw in six kitchen knives. And wait, there's more. Every page should have an, oh, wait, there's more. And it should be matched to what the page is about. So here, when people are looking at the Inspiration Gallery, we're actually pulling them to the Schedule and Appointment page. Um, on other pages, we might use this space to link specifically to download that flooring guide that we talked to you about. On Randall Beans, almost every page has a get the recipe, get the recipe collection, get the new recipe collection. Because what are people coming to that website for? Up until, well, up until April, it was really not an e-commerce website because shipping Gla uh, shipping beans in glass jars is very cost prohibitive. So the website was always about recipes and finding out about Randall Beans. These days, their online store does a little bit better, but the majority of people come to the website. They just want to know, what can I do with black beans? And you'd be amazed. And finally, you want to close that loop. You've got somebody's email address. You have gone to all the trouble. You've created an offer. You've built a landing page. You've promoted it. You've captured their information. Don't let them go without closing the loop with email. 50% of people who come are qualified, but, or who fill out your forms. They're qualified, but they're not ready to buy. And so they... Um, they will be good prospects for you eventually. They're just not good now. Using email allows you to stay in touch until they're ready to buy. This is an example of lead nurturing. And I, I like this because I, I think this company did everything right. First off, the emails are very simple. You notice they're not over-designed. They're just, hey, you signed up. How's it going? Um, the second email is more, you know, other people who have done what you did are also interested in this. And here's how it worked. Here's some of the results they got. You know, can we help you? Um, and then here, because this is more of a sales, um, this kind of sort of last ditch effort. What we do with a lot of our automated campaigns is we'll send two or three emails. I'll send, you know, if you download something, I'll send you a link to a video. The next day I'll send you an invitation to our Facebook group. And then maybe I'll send you an invitation to have a conversation. After that, I move you to our regular email system and you get emails from us however often we send them depending on the list that you're on. The trick here is unlike your email newsletters that are clearly very very over-designed, 
These look like you just dashed them off right from your desktop. It has a more personal feel. And actually, we've seen data that says these kind of emails actually get higher engagement and higher response. And look at how easy it is to have that set up. Response rate for lead generating um, or lead nurturing emails compared to standalone email blasts, four to 10 times higher. If you're going to do automated email tips, uh, if you're going to do automated email, here's a couple of tips. The first is you got to think about your buying cycle. How, how far apart should you send the emails every hour, every day, every week? I signed up for an email from a retail store and they proceeded to send me an email every single day. And at about day five, I was like, you people need to go away because it was too much. Um, in the heating and air conditioning business, people are in the buying cycle for 72 hours. So you got to get your emails out. Boom, boom, boom. Because if you wait, it's too late. Um, for my flooring company, one email every, you know, one email a week for several weeks is probably pretty good because flooring, interior design, home remodeling, those are things people think about for a longer period of time. Each email that you send in this automated cycle, short, single focus. Have you noticed that I kind of have a theme there that it is short, single focus, short, single focus from the landing page, the offer, and now the automated response. Don't go off in multiple directions because you present people too much, they simply back away. Text only, limited design, and one call to action. Don't send me an email with three links. I'm not going to open all of them. Send me three emails over a period of time with one high-quality link each. Inbound marketing works at every stage in the process. Remember I told you that to move from stranger to visitor, you had to attract. From visitor to prospect, you had to engage. Prospect to customer, close, and then delight. And this is where it comes in. You focus, if you look at your sales funnel and where do you not have enough leads? Because business is a numbers game. If you're not attracting enough people, pay attention to growing your social media community and working on your website, your SEO, and your content to drive more traffic. If you really get a lot of traffic but not a lot of people interacting with you, this is where you need to be focusing on your landing pages, your social media engagement. Here, you need to be focused on your proposals, your sales calls, your automated email. And it doesn't stop here. You need to have automated programs to drive repeat business, reviews, and referrals. Because the more you do here, the less you need to do here. Okay, I buzzed through that really fast. And now's a great time for questions. Um, I want to just let you know, and we'll have this up on the screen. If you're looking for me, I'm a busy person. <laughs> um, my agency and my day job is uh, Roundpeg. We are a digital agency. The digital toolbox is where we have moved all of our training resources. And my podcast, More Than A Few Words, you can find wherever you look for podcasts. Okay. Awesome job. So good. Like, <laughs> So good. I took a page of notes. <laughs> and the thing that's crazy is I'm a marketer. Like, I know this stuff too, but I always learn stuff from you every single time. And I I think that it's interesting. You and I were talking the other day and you were like, you know, there's a lot of marketers that'll be watching, but I, I always learn something new. And I am the kind of person I try to take the approach of, you know, you know, like, for example, if someone were like, hey, we're going to teach about Facebook Live. I mean, I'm pretty much like, I feel like I know a lot, but there's you can always learn something new, but with you, I learn, I always just learn a lot. So I appreciate that so much. You guys, as um, there's a, we can take questions for sure. Lorraine is going to stick around to answer your questions. I know I want to kind of go back and hit on a couple of really important points. I'm going to um, 
as you said, as Lorraine mentioned, she's got this digital toolbox. Mm -hmm. So I want you guys to check it out. I want to share my screen and just show it to everybody really quick. So here's the page, you guys. Yeah. That's the what. Here's the uh, digital toolbox. So you'll go to this page and look at this. Look, it's it's what you just talked about, kind of in action, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's a real live example of you offering us something to help us, right? Mm -hmm. And then the uh, podcast, you guys, I'm going to post that in here as well uh, so that you guys have that link too. Uh, great podcast, great way to continue learning. You have guests on here all the time. So um, Including again, you soon, yeah, I hope. I'm excited. So Lorraine and I were talking and I'm going to uh, come on the show. I'm super pumped about that. It's going to be great. It's an honor too. So make sure you guys uh, check out those resources, of course. Um, both the podcast and the digital toolbox that they've put together uh, for you guys to so you guys can keep learning. So I believe we have some questions. So let me do a couple of things here. Okay. Uh, Megan says the same thing. She's like, I always <laughs> learn something. Megan is also a super smart marketer. She's a of course, a wonderful uh, person that's always in our ACI social media group stuff. So Brandon has a question. So you guys post your questions and uh, Lorraine will get to them. She will answer your questions for you. So if you have any questions at all about the stuff that we talked about, uh, post those and we will uh, pull it up and we'll we'll talk about it. So Brandon Coppernell says, this is all really great information and it is extremely helpful. Question, can you give us a few examples of lessons learned along the way? So one of the big, oh, a couple of the big lessons in the beginning, because because I know a lot of stuff and I want to share everything. And so I was putting together these great big resources that were all encompassing. And then I ran out of stuff. <laughs> and, I mean, because let's face it, yes, the stuff changes, but, you know, you have some main topics. And so then I went, ooh, instead of doing the ultimate guide to email marketing, maybe I should break that up. Here's a guide on headlines. Here's a piece on just design. Here's a segment on le le list building. So that was one of the big ones. Um, the other thing, and uh, uh, we, we go through this over and over again, um, I, I'm definitely a words person and I write and I think I need to oversell. And so my early landing pages had a lot of information and then the form was down at the bottom. And so... Um, you know, we, we we realized, put the form at the top, the way we do it now, if I feel compelled, if I have to tell you a lot of stuff, I tell you a little bit, I have the offer, and then if you're not convinced and you scroll down the page, then you get all the rest of my stuff. So um, that definitely, um, and uh, too many, um, too many drips. Like, you know, at the end of three drips, you're either you're either there or you're not, and I'm going to leave you alone. And by drip, you mean the uh, nurture emails that mm -hmm. come after. So dripping is when it's like email number one, then email number two, email number three. Those are dripped emails. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Good. Sorry, I, I, I slipped into jargon. I try not to do that. <laughs> It's okay. I do it all the time. It's okay. We have a gamut of people in our audience. We have people that are, as we mentioned, we have some marketing you know, specialists in our audience, of course. And then we have small business owners that aren't even doing any kind of email marketing yet. So I have a question for you. And that is when it comes to, let's say, for example, a business that is not doing anything at all, they mm -hmm. are doing no email marketing. They haven't started. They don't even have an email marketing platform. Do you have a suggestion for them or a resource or a way, like what's the best way for them to get started? I think um, two things. Number one, get started. Right. Um, so now, uh, full confession, I'm a constant contact reseller, so I love constant contact. If you really have absolutely no names, MailChimp is a nice place to start. Um, I think there's some limitations as it gets bigger, but as, as you're starting. Um, and send your first email to everybody you know. Um, when I started Round Peg, I had 59 people in this market. I, I had contacts all over the country, but I wanted to start a business locally. So send your first email to your friends and your family and, hey, this is what I'm doing. And tell them a little bit about your business and invite them to share. Over time, you need to be blogging. I mean, that's a whole different topic. Um, and so you can then share links to your blog posts. Or if you're in an industry where you're answering a lot of questions via e like email, you know, uh, my uh, 
my web support guy, Simon, he's always writing these really long emails explaining to customers how to do something. Guess what? If one person has that question, a hundred other people do. It's a great blog post and it would be great content for your newsletter. So I would start there. And then once you get that going a little bit, then create a simple offer for your website. I love it. I love it. So I agree. I think MailChimp is a great place to start. It's the platform has come a long way. Mm -hmm. I think the reason I always tell people to start there is because I do believe one, I think MailChimp has great resources. They have great, you know, um, lead magnets of their own that help you, mm -hmm. but they also, the platform is really intuitive and it kind of walks you through like how to do everything you were talking about today. And mm -hmm. I just think the platform has come a really long way. And as you said, it's a great place to start. And as you grow, then you might want to use a different, maybe a more sophisticated, more CRM focused mm -hmm. uh, type of platform. And I think it's fairly easy to change. I mean, it's really not all that difficult to switch from one platform to another. And if you really freaked out by it, by the time you have all those crazy emails, you should be rocking and rolling and you can just hire somebody to do it for you. So, that's right. <laughs> yeah, totally. So that's, that's great. Um, I found it, um, the whole, the interesting piece about your, I want to go back to uh, the buying cycle. You talked about some businesses have a really short decision-making process and then some have a longer mm -hmm. uh, buying cycle decision-making process. And this is something that, um, you know, I always, I'm really passionate. I always use the plumber has a really short, those customers have a really short decision-making process. It's usually, first person who answers the phone. Yeah, It's usually like, what's the first listing on Google, right? On my search versus something like you talked about the flooring people. Um, mm -hmm. They have a longer uh, buying cycle, meaning the decision-making process is a little bit longer. People might want to do more research. When it comes to helping people understand, like, do, what is your best, um, I mean, how do you help clients understand or really identify, okay, for example, I mean, the plumber example and the um, HVAC example is somewhat obvious, but maybe there's a lot of businesses I think that are just in a, like in a longer, um, that, or they're in a more general area. Like I'm going to point out um, Kyle with sea salt uh, and cinnamon. They are a vegan baker, right? And mm -hmm. so that that's an example, uh, one example. Then we have some freelancers in here. We have a um, uh, marketing companies. How do people understand, for example, short versus long versus medium? And how do they take that and know how often those drip emails should happen? So I think you have to look at like for your bakery, um, how in that instance, that's almost closer to the chewing gum example, you know, where you're walking by and you just, oh, I want that. So in that, you know, you have to think about how often do people buy from you? You know, is, a, you know, that first big thing is this is something people buy all the time, something people will buy several times in their lifetime, something they might buy once. And so that's kind of your first divider. And then you'd be surprised as you talk to businesses, they kind of know how often do you, how many conversations do you have to have with someone before they sign on the dotted line? Oh, you know, we're going to talk three or four times. Okay. So if we can get an email in between, do you think, and, and automate that piece of it, Will that reduce the number of conversations that you have? And and also, you, they already kind of know, well, how often do you call them? Uh, you know, I usually check in with them every two weeks. Okay, so if you check in with them every two weeks, what if we do an email in 10 days and then you have that two-week call? They will have just heard from you. On companies, but I want to go back to because the plumber and the HVAC guys, because that's my roots. I, I came out of the HVAC industry. You have to be in people's heads before they need you. Mm -hmm. And so for those businesses, inbound marketing is often less about the emergency and more about providing other helpful home tips so that you are on their radar. For example, um, a roofer, um, hailstorm prevention tips. You know, I mean, not not that's going to prevent the, the storm, but storm, <laughs> yeah, we can do that. <laughs> okay. But Magic. storm, da but storm damage. You know, yeah. if you're living in hurricane area, um, or a babysitter guide. When we were, when I was a carrier, we did a. Uh, in those days, you had to order it. We mailed you a book. Yeah. Um, 
because it's a long time ago. Stamps but you could do online. you could do an online kind of like babysitter guide. So it's a, a checklist you print out and you leave the tips for your babysitter. And sure enough, there's your logo and phone number at the bottom of it. And so that's a way to collect email and get people into your cycle before they're even thinking about buying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I always use the, um, I have a realtor and she does such a great job with this. It's like, I mean, think about it, how many times are you buying a house, right? But she wants you to think of her when you're ready the next time, but also to refer her. And so she does a really good job with like sending out a newsletter that's home care tips, but also market, like how's the market performing, you know, just so you know, like how your value of your house. So I love that idea about kind of nurturing people with not about your stuff or your business, right? Helping them that, that kind of complements it. So for example, I'm going to use Kyle, uh, who is, uh, with season cinnamon, you know, <laughs> they obviously, maybe they need to, maybe they could send tips and education about why vegan, a vegan diet is healthy mm -hmm. and the benefits of a vegan diet, because again, convincing them to order the vegan baked goods versus, you know, going to a different bakery that just does whatever else. Right. So of course, like offering just health tips and cause people who care about vegan foods probably care about other things too, including, mm -hmm. you know, uh, safety of animals and, pr you know, properly taking care of people. So, so he actually has a question. Kyle says, is sharing our recipes a good idea? Um, so, uh, that, you know, that, that's an interesting one because you don't want people necessarily making them at home, then they mm -hmm. don't need you. Mm -hmm. What I would probably share is a recipe that goes well with your baked goods. Mm -hmm. So instead of telling them how to bake your amazing vegan muffins, share a recipe on, um, okay, I was going to say an omelet, but clearly it's not going to be an omelet to go with a <laughs> vegan muffin, but a, a breakfast, a vegan breakfast dish that you, that is fabulous, but not necessarily complete without your muffin, mm -hmm. um, which kind of leads me to something else. I talked a lot about promoting on social media and I talked about promoting on your website. One of the things that we've always known, but I think this has really taught us is that we're not alone. And so finding businesses that complement yours, if you're a real estate agent, um, and you have a relationship with an inspector and a roofer, sharing your offer on their list and sharing their offer to your list helps you introduce, I mean, it's net networking taken virtually. I mean, that's really what it is. So kind of um, uh, doing that cross promotion. So I wouldn't necessarily give away the store, Kyle, except if I come in to visit, I wouldn't mind a free muffin. Um, <laughs> But but give away something that your audience would appreciate. Yeah, I would agree with that. And there's he, uh, Kyle's getting some great suggestions in the in the comments. And I think you you hit the nail on the head. It's don't give away the recipe to your stuff, but maybe provide recipes to other items that you don't sell that are vegan. Mm -hmm. um, so for sure, I think that that is you know again because also especially because I mean they make vegan like. I don't know if you've had their stuff, Lorraine, but like, I mean, they, they taste amazing, right? Mm -hmm. And if I try to make something like that at home, it's going to taste like cardboard. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to try to make the muffins. I'm going to buy the freaking muffins from them, but I might want to make, you know, a savory dish for dinner that mm -hmm. they're not offering. So I do think that, uh, Kyle, there's a lot of great ways that you guys can nurture your audience without giving away your recipe for sure. So um, we have another question. I'll get to Brandon's question. So he says, do you have an example of a, a drip slash engage email or campaign after someone goes from prospect to customer? Oh, absolutely. Um, that's what I call an onboarding campaign. And so um, uh, if you think about, uh, for example, when you start working with us, we need a whole bunch of stuff from you. We need your logo. We need, we need logins, credentials. We need all sorts of stuff. We want you to be thinking about all sorts of things in time for, for our first meeting. If I sent you one email with everything I needed, you're going to do the first thing and you're going to file the email and you're not going to get to steps three, four, and five. And so onboarding, if, if you have a new customer um, where you need information, if you have a new customer because your product is more about, you have to start using it. So like a, a health club, that's one of those things where 
you sign up and you're really excited and you get up at six o'clock every morning until the first day there's a blizzard. <laughs> right. And so in that business, having an email that goes out once a week that is designed to, hey, you know, you signed up in January. How you doing with your workouts? Do you have questions? Um, you know, what's your experience been like? Um, you know, that kind of stuff to kind of keep people motivated to keep using your product. That's another great way, I think, to use um, drip campaigns. And we also have some, um, uh, uh, an, an eye doctor. Um the uh, everybody who got uh, uh, 30 day extended contacts, he sends them an email once a month that says change your contacts because oh, nice. if, if you wear 30 day extended, you do forget. Um, and all of a sudden you're like, crap, I've had these in my eyes for 45 days. Right. How long has it been? Yeah. yeah. Speaking for a friend. because <laughs> You wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> um, but, so, but then what he did is like at four months, the email had the reminder, but it also had a quick note on, hey, you know, you might want to get an extra pair of glasses for those days you don't want to wear contacts. And then at eight months, there was a, you know, prescription sunglasses, if you're going swimming or, you know, you want regular sunglasses. And then right at 11 months, time to come back. So that's another nice way to kind of use that. Uh, heating and air conditioning contractors send in an email, change your filter. Mm -hmm. Because we also don't, do, we should do that every month. But if you don't set a calendar appointment, you don't remember. Yeah. Th those are really good examples. I like those examples a lot. So hopefully, Brandon, that gives you, gets your uh, your wheels turning a little bit there. So um, I have a question. It, when So let's say I'm a, a new prospect. I have downloaded the free guide, the free checklist. Mm -hmm. And I have that and you, I'm getting, you know, I get that onboarding sequence and then I go into what you're describing as kind of like a regular reoccurring <laughs> weekly or monthly, um, you know, routine with the regular emails that get, that everybody gets. Mm -hmm. So what happens when round pig, for example, comes up with a new guide in a new checklist? Do you, do you send your whole list and say, Hey, we've got a new list, a new guide for you that we want to let you know about? Like, because obviously, if I don't, if I'm not on your website all the time, I may not see it. So, how do you announce, if you will? Oh yeah, you have a new a new uh, product for you or a new offer. So, if you um, if you want the resources from the digital toolbox, um, those we um, we send a weekly because we're we're adding new stuff every week. We send a weekly. Here it is mm -hmm. from Roundpeg. Um, if we if we create something that we think our customers want, we'll we will. Um, We'll have a link in the email, but I don't actually make you go back to my website and fill out the form again because that's annoying. Yeah. I already know who you are. So there's just a button in the email and you can get whatever resource I'm offering. But I can see who clicked mm -hmm. and, and using constant contact, I can automatically, anybody who clicks, I can put them in a special list. Got it. So you tag them if you will. So I can tag them and they automatically... Um, uh, click segmentation. Mm -hmm. They automatically end up on a list. And now I'm like, oh, I sent that email to 2,500 of my fans, 800 opened, and 35 clicked on that button. I want to talk to those 35 people. I want to have an offer just for them. Mm -hmm. Because they're down there in the funnel. Yes. And you, so yeah, I love that. So that's always been something I've always kind of like, okay, I've got a couple different freebies, right? Mm -hmm. How do I okay, they downloaded this freebie, but they might also want this freebie too. So that whole kind of mm -hmm. process, if you will, of, of how to how to really go about it the right way. So that's helpful, mm -hmm. super helpful. So um, wonderful. This is super good. So um, <laughs> Peggy says, love the don't be annoying rule throughout, right? Yeah, always offer value. Don't go don't go overboard for sure. <laughs> Um, Brandon is, is echoing you. He's saying mm -hmm. segment, segment, segment. So yeah. Thank you, the, Brandon. The strategist and, and Brandon for sure. So, um, yes, Kyle's talking about his breakfast burritos. I do love them. <laughs> Kyle knows, Kyle, you know what neighborhood I live in. If you ever want to just randomly drop me a breakfast burrito, I would not resist it. They, <laughs> they are so good. They are so good. Well, I think that we got through a, a lot of questions and I, I don't see any new questions. So speak now or forever hold your fingers you guys type those questions in um but 
I want to thank you again, Lorraine, uh, for being here today. Again, just being able to come virtually, to show up on video. Not everybody likes to be on video. Um, you you definitely still had had the same energy. Of course, it's not the same as being in the room with you, but it felt the same. And I hope that everyone at home felt the same as well, that it was like being in the room with you. You always bring so much value and it's always fun. And I love the way that you drop uh, examples and all that stuff. So much, so much help, so much help for our group uh, this morning. And again, just thank you. But you guys, thank again, you. check out the digital toolbox. So mm -hmm. it's digital toolbox in.com. The links are up in the comments. And then of course, check out the podcast. If you listen to podcasts, um, make sure that you uh, pay attention more than a few words. I do see a last question uh, from Shonda. She says, in my business, I have two primary segments of business, mm -hmm. portable restrooms and septic plumbing. I can come up with a lot of fun social media content for her. <laughs> um, so, portable restrooms and septic plumbing. Would you have two landing pages yes. in segment? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah, now, because those are two very different customers, the people that need the portable restrooms, those are people running events. They're running mini marathons someday. Right. <laughs> Again, you know, they're, they're hosting gatherings where the bat or they're doing, it's a construction site. And that's very different than someone who has septic plumbing needs where that is a permanent capital investment kind of thing. So it's, it's a very different customer. Um, and yeah, I would totally do that. And, um, even on the portable restrooms, as you get going, I would create a checklist for portable restrooms. If you're hosting a, a two day concert, portable or music festival, portable restrooms for, uh, a marathon kind of a one and done event portable restrooms uh along your parks that are more public and and that are there more long term those are again three very different customers even though they all want your portable restrooms totally yeah i i think that um you, that's one of those things where you they, they almost have different funnels for each mm -hmm. customer type right yeah like different journey different needs different different conversations mm -hmm. so you know, the, the, the good news is, is you have multiple entities to serve, to serve people, Shonda, mm -hmm. but the bad news is you do have to kind of do a little extra work because, you know, you have multiple, multiple segments for sure. So, okay. We have one last question. This is the last question we'll take. And it's from Kathy Planton. She says, what are good subject lines that will create enough interest to open the email? This is like a whole nother presentation, isn't it, Lorraine? Yes. It, yeah. That, that is a, a whole presentation. I'll give you my, my quick and dirty, um, mm -hmm. Your uh, presentation, uh, your email needs to be six words max. Your, your subject line, six words max. Longer than that, it's going to be truncated. The most interesting information needs to be up front. So um, uh, today's marketing tip from Bike Wave. Irrelevant. I know it's today. Um, I know it's coming from bike wave. You haven't told me anything in those six words that I don't already know. So you really need to, um, uh, put things in the subject line that immediately spark curiosity, answer a question. Don't ask questions. Um, we are asked way too many questions in our lives. We're looking for answers. So instead of how do you answer this? Here's how you um, and finally, personalization. Most software platforms now will allow you to drop the person's name into the subject line. And it is human nature. We see our names. We're there. Mm -hmm. I like it. Do you have a resource uh, by chance off the top of your head? Do you have a podcast episode or a, a blog post that talks about this uh, that we can uh, share? Yeah. Um, uh, actually, if you go to the digital toolbox, I'm going to hop over there real quick. Um, and I'm going to, oh, no, I got to share. Oh, I got to share my screen. Um, I can hold share on. mine. Well, but I know where I'm going. Oh, got it. <laughs> so um, there we go. Share. Come on, baby. It. Oh, I got it. Oh, it's working on it. It's true. I was thinking about it. All it's right. If you can, it. if you can share it, if you go to the digital toolbox um, under tools, about a third of the way down the page, there is actually a, um, uh, oops, did I lose you? Nope, I'm here. Okay, if you go to, uh, because my computer has completely locked up, so I'm going to let you do it. <laughs> go to the go to the digital toolbox, uh -huh. 
Um, uh, on the page that says tools. Browse the tools. Okay, scroll scroll down. Uh, there, there's like a, a and it looks like an Excel spreadsheet. You can actually sort that oh, table yeah. by topic. So you can find email. Um, the white paper on subject lines is called Read This Now. Um, there's also a video that may be called Standout Subject Lines or Read This Now. Yep, I just posted the link. It's fantastic. How cool is that? Now, I, I'm going to tell you, you do have to create a membership. There is a free a membership, yeah. but you have to create a membership in order to get that, uh, get those resources. Awesome. Okay. I love this. It didn't let me post a link, but we will make sure we post a link. You guys, basically look at this thing, go to the digital toolbox and look at all of this awesome stuff. Wow. This is great, Lorraine. So Kathy, definitely, I hope that that, that was helpful for you. Uh, what we described, of course, for your answer, but also check out the digital toolbox because you can learn even more. So I hope everybody, uh, Brandon says, I spy set up Google alerts. <laughs> 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 He's great. Um, we've got, uh, you know, Sarah Jenkins says, so great. Thank you for the information. So again, Kyle says, great info. Um, you guys are awesome. Thanks for being here today. And Lorraine, thank you again so much for being here. We really appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And just thanks again for your time. Thank you guys. Have a great day. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all face to face at some point. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Thanks, Lorraine. See you Thank later. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Well, there you have it, you guys. So that was amazing. Seriously, Lorraine's always so good. She always brings so much value. So here's what's cool. If you missed the beginning of this presentation, if you came in about halfway through, if you came in at the end, you can watch the replay. So this will be saved on both our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page. So make sure you uh, go back, watch it. You can go back and rewatch it if you're like, whoa, I was kind of multitasking, but now I really need to go back and sit back and, and learn what Lorraine was talking about. I will tell you that this stuff is powerful. Lead generation, email marketing, if you're not already doing it, you should be doing it in your business. And email marketing fits any business as Lorraine gave lots of great examples, right? So if you are new to it, then definitely get started like she said, get in there and go back and watch this episode again, uh, this episode, this presentation again, and take notes and, and learn from what Lorraine said, because honestly, I will be honest with you. I wish I had this presentation about three years ago. Literally, I have learned along the hard way, learned the hard ways to do this stuff. She basically gave you right to it, got right to it, gave you the tips you needed to go create these amazing landing pages and to nurture people, which is the whole point. So I hope that you all will, will take this uh, advice that she gave you and apply it. And if you are already doing list building and doing this stuff, maybe you need to go back and make some tweaks based on some of the lessons that we learned from Lorraine today. And I hope that you'll take action. So, and again, if you found this valuable, please share the stream. We would love to get more people to be tuned into ECI Social Media Group. We hope we get to see you guys in person soon. We don't know, right? Everything is just so unknown at this point. Uh, but we as a committee are still discussing and still thinking through how we want to do all of this stuff. But the thing is, is that while we can do it virtually, we still want to stay connected to you. So there's a couple things we want you to do. One, follow the page. If you haven't followed the ECI social media group uh, Facebook page, for sure. And then go to ECI uh, social media.net and subscribe to our email list so that you get notified about how we're doing this stuff. So we send an email out every month and we let you know who the presenter is, what's going on, and we will let you know. We're either going to be meeting in person or we're going to stick to virtual for a while. We may even just start doing some virtual fun stuff. Who knows, right? So get subscribed to our email list so that you can stay in the know. That's what I got for you guys. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your afternoon or day. It's still morning. And uh, thanks for being here. And again, every third Thursday of the month. So hopefully we'll see you next month, either in person or here on the live stream. So have a good one, you guys. That's all we got for today.